Thank you, sir. Uh, actually, the term that we use is not, no longer disciplinary office because there's a negative connotation related to it. So now we use behavior management office. But the content is still the same. We manage the behavior from now on uh, in love, of course. There are three parts of our uh, our worship uh, presentation. I'd like to invite two students. Uh, one is a graduate in dentistry, and one is finishing dentistry. Uh, Alexa finished dentistry just lately. She'll tell you how the Lord has blessed her, how the Lord has used her, her like Daniel in Babylon. She's not a graduate of AUP, but she stands out for the Lord. Um, Iona is a daughter of this church. Because of you, brethren, here, we were so much blessed by the life of this young lady in the Philippines. May I invite you to please come. And afterwards, we will have about 10 minutes study in connection with their presentations from the Word of God. Please come. Happy Sabbath, Church. So I was here five years ago. I study in the dental nursing school, the government dental nursing school for seven months. I don't know if any of you still remember me. So before I testify, let's pray. Our great and mighty heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for giving us this opportunity to celebrate Sabbath together again here in this church where the church member has prayed for me. And indeed, dear Lord, the prayer has been answered and I'm standing here for you to testify how you have been working in my life, how you have answered the unexpected answered prayer. Lord, be with me. May your Holy Spirit guide me that this church will be blessed and you will transform again this church to be a praying church for the glory of your name. We pray this in the loving name of Jesus. Amen. Five years ago, I was here studying dental nursing, but I did not finish my study because I have, I encounter Sabbath problem. But right now I consider that Sabbath blessing. And I clearly remember that by God's grace, this church have become, most of the parents have become my spiritual parents. You guys doesn't know how the prayers that you pray every midweek have impacted my life so much. And the youth, the PESDEC AOI, the fellowship that you have with me, the friendship, the time that we spend in Bible study have somehow make me grow in faith. And the moment when you become friends with me, the seed grows. And by God's grace, that's one of the reason why I stand for Sabbath. Maybe some people think like, it's just Sabbath. You can just, you know, just go there, go to school on Sabbath. And then when you graduate, you can, you can go to church faithfully. But it's not like that. If you have your Bible, let's open in Jeremiah 33, verse 3. It says here, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. Imagine, it's what a beautiful promise the Lord said that when we call upon his name, when we pray to him, what it says, I will answer thee. He will answer our prayer, but not just answer. He says, I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. He will wow us. He will bless us so much with amazing things, more than we ever think of, more than what we ever pray of. So I'll be sharing my journey after the Lord um, 
help me to stand for Sabbath. I really praise God. It's because a praying church, not just this church, but my home church in Kudat, and also praying parents. And I know that I myself cannot stand for him because I'm so weak. But it's the, by God's grace, the prayers of the church have helped me to grow and helped me to stand for him. So um, the Lord, by God's grace, um, sent me to AUP to study dentistry. You know, like if I, if I don't stand for him that day, now I will be just dental nursing, dental nurse. But the Lord have bigger plans. The Lord want me to be a dentist. So I was studying there for four years already. And just last June, uh, my parents called me and, uh, and my dad talked to me like, Yon, we don't have money anymore. It's been six months, I don't have part-time job. And it's two of you who are studying in college. I can, I can sponsor only one of you. So I will sponsor you instead of your brother. So I was telling my dad, no, um, I will pray to the Lord that he will provide for me because my brother just started uh, nutrition that time. So I was telling them that that time. But actually, I have, so ver I have very little faith that the Lord will provide for me and the Lord rebuked me one time when I have my devotional. It says like, hey, Yon, you know, you go to church every Sabbath, you have your personal devotion, you pray to me, but why did you doubt me? And I was like, wow, this, this is so real to us. I don't know what you're experiencing in your personal walk with the Lord, but maybe there's a time that we doubt him even though we said that we know him and the Lord rebuked me and I was telling my parents hey we should really start praying about these things if the Lord's will for me to finish this dentistry the Lord will provide in his miraculous way so we pray for it and by God's grace there is three prayers that I've been praying for even before I studied in Penang before the first prayer was, Lord, send me to a place where I can grow. I can grow spiritually. I can grow in every aspect. The second prayer was, before I'm, when I was still here, I'm just a shy and I don't really talk much. <laughs> but the Lord sent me here so that I can improve my English because that's my second prayer. And my third prayer was just, just simple prayer. Lord, I want to go for a mission. So, the Lord answered these three prayers in miraculous way. Because of these things that happen, that we don't have money anymore, God used that so that I can grow. God used these circumstances, not just for me to join a mission, but after struggling in prayer and reading of the word, really seeking God's will, if he really want me to finish my denti dentistry course or I just go back to Malaysia work and then if I have money and I go back to Philippines and finish it. But if I do that, I belittle him. I have too little faith. But God want me to pray and God want me to really surrender to him my everything. And by God's grace, two weeks before, before my... Um, enrollment through through my dean he, she communicated with the gc and i get the email maybe three weeks three weeks ago i come here before i stand with all of you um gc found a sponsor from caring hands ministry worldwide there are sda independent um, organization that have dent, dent, uh, mobile and stationary dental clinic all over the world and they're willing to sponsor me for my final year by God's grace and when I finish next year in May 2018 
they will send me as a missionary dentist in Chuk, Micronesia. See how the Lord, when He promised that when we call upon Him, He will answer it. He will not just answer, but He will do great and mighty things which we know it not. So I encourage the church, I'm here stand in front of you as an answered prayer. May you continually unite as a church to pray for the young people to be empowered for the glory of the Lord. By God's grace. Happy Sabbath, church. I'm Alexa Elinti Tahud. I'm a licensed dentist also from the Philippines. And I just got my license this July. And I want to share to you with that uh, three months before I got my license, um, my board examinations was scheduled this June and uh, this May and June, this year, May, June. And then I decided to pray a limitless prayer for my examinations. I prayed to the Lord that, Lord, if it is your will, uh, if you think you, will, you can use me for your glory, I know this is an impossible prayer, but Lord, if you, it is your will, please make me the number one in my country when I take these words. So... I decided to not limit our God with our prayers because we have a limitless God. So why not ask for the best, right? Right? For the, for, all, for the parents here and for the youth here. So at that point, I just really did my best. And the Lord inspired me that our, all our examinations in our school and everything that we are in, um, it should just... It should all be offered to God because it's not just a simple examination. It's a testimony that our God is the real God. Do you, do you believe that, church? Our God is the real God. So it inspired me that um, I will not just be taking these examinations to get my license. This will be a testimony in the future that we serve a powerful God. So yes, days passed and weeks passed. And I took my board examinations on um, May and June. We have two parts. And then um, after that, the results came and I received the best gift ever from the Lord. We, when we decide not to limit Him and when we pray that everything will be just according to your will, Lord, if you can use what little that we have, he will really multiply it, just as our topic today, which is five loaves and two fishes. So at that time, um, June 6, the results came, and I, wa I, was, I landed the first in the Philippine uh, National Board Examinations for Dentistry. Amen, church. Really, God, our God can really make the impossible things possible. So I was overjoyed. My family was happy, and... Um, we were just waiting for the oath taking ceremony, if you all know that. That is a very prestigious event. And as the number one on our country, I was given the privilege to give a speech in that ceremony. And then at that time, the date is not yet final. So I was just informed that, hey, you will give a speech in this prestigious event. So prepare your speech and we will just inform you afterwards on the date so i was just thank you lord this is um a great opportunity to share that how the how you have blessed me all these years and after that a few days after that i received the date of that ceremony and it was on a saturday and i was so i was praying lord it could have been not on my time like it could have me it could have been on the next board examinations but why why did you choose that it would match up where i was the top notcher of the of the examinations and, and i will give the speech so at that point i was really 
shaky if I will attend because some Adventists say that yes, it's a, it's a really uh, great way and you will be standing in front of all these deans and all these students and the government officials and they will share this event. Uh, they will share the, uh, the on, uh, awesomeness of our God and then after that, I was praying, Lord, please give me strength. I don't know what to do. Should I attend or should I not? And then at that time, it was the first time that Ariona messaged me on Facebook and she, and she said, Hey, I, want, I read your article and I knew how the Lord has blessed you. And can you give your testimony in Archer, in, in, his, in her school? Because I wasn't a student in, his school, in her school. So I was like, yeah, I can share my testimony. And then after that, when I went to her school and shared, I wasn't the one who was inspired. I was the one who was inspired instead of inspiring the students. I saw how they really study the Bible and how they pray. And I went home that night and I contacted all the government officials of the, of the country who was responsible in organizing the event. And I told them, I will not attend the ceremony. And this everything started the persecution really started they were they were saying to me you know the consequences of your decision you can't blame us of what will happen after you stand up for this why are you doing this it's just one day the lord your god will understand what it's just one day so what's what are you standing for this is not principle this is just your ego they were telling me that and the, and i was like no you don't understand our god he is really serious with his promises so he has blessed me so much and what is this one day that i can give it up to the lord right what why what is the prestige what is the fame if we can give it up with the robe of righteousness that we will receive when christ comes so i was like i can give it up i can give up all the job opportunities that will come on that day that will be offered I'm willing to not attend this event. And even just one day before that event, that ceremony, they, they called me. We, we are giving you a last chance to change your decision. We will give you 10 minutes and we will call you back. We are having a meeting now. And if you change your decision, um, we can still accept you and put you in the program. And I, was, I told them, no. Um, my decision is final and uh, I will not attend the, the event. So after that, I prayed to the Lord, Lord, take this chance and I know that you have plans for me and this will not end. And I, th I pray, Lord, that if you will use this testimony to inspire other people, even, even the people that I don't know, please use this uh, experience. And after that, I attended the Sabbath and now i'm here standing in front of you and looking back of the all the things that i have experienced what if the lord changed the date then i will not be able to share to you how god is really the be, the best god that if ever that you know someone else if ever you know a student or a person who struggles with the sabbath encourage them because we have known for times that what is the what are what is the mark of the beast right it's the sunday law right so if we can't stand on the sabbath on these little things how can we stand for the greatest test of faith you know the lord is really merciful with us that he gives us these little tests with our examinations with just um work if we can't stand for these little things how can we face what is coming we can't even imagine the persecution that will come so I am making this plea that even with this little testimony, may you empower those who are facing Sabbath problems. If, if you know every, anyone, because the Lord will really bless you abundantly if you just stand for our faith. So I live with this verse. Sorry, it's, uh, my testimony is a little long. Um, Romans 8, 28. And it says, um, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to our to His purpose. So, what is our purpose? To to share that our God is the best God. Amen.
Thank you, Alexa. Thank you, Ariona. Thank you, church. If these two girls, ladies, have not stood for the Lord in keeping the Sabbath, they would have the experience of sharing his love, his miracles to you this morning. Praise God. Praise God. I'll kneel down and we'll pray once more. Almighty Father, we rejoice this morning for young people who are willing to stand for you. And we rejoice this morning for parents who are willing to support their children to stand for you. We rejoice this morning because we are here to stand for you. Lord, use us in every way as you wish it. As we study your word, Father, allow your Holy Spirit to impress upon us the beauty of your word that we may understand Jesus more and serve him, willing to die for him from now on. Oh, thank you for this privilege of prayer, for answering it, for the greatest honor and glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. Give ye them to eat. Thousands of people were gathered. And Jesus is saying to the disciples, Give ye them to eat. In the narrative of John, Jesus is talking to Philip. Philip, where shall... Philip said, where shall we get food? 200 penny worth is not enough, sir. And Andrew said, there's a lad here with five loaves of bread and two fishes but what are they among so many if you look at the narrative of matthew matthew 14 they didn't even mention about the child matthew just mentioned jesus command give you them to eat the same is with mark the same is true with Luke. But I'm glad John was more detailed that he mentioned about Philip, about Andrew, and about the lad. If you ask me what's in this basket, I know for now you know the answer. I asked Mrs. Thomas Maria, can you prepare Two fried fish for me. Two fried fishes. She said, ooh, fishes. <laughs> They're here. The small fishes. Because when I was in Loma Linda, uh, in, 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 in Southern California, as a youth pastor, my pastor said, if you want the children to listen, you should have props. So I said, OK, I will learn. And I did a lot of practice in my children when I homeschooled them. So I brought two pieces. And well, how many loaves of bread? You know, I asked for five, and Mrs. Maria gave me more. Wow, I said, seven fishes, uh, seven items, five loaves of bread. And two fishes. Five plus two equals seven. There were six of us coming down from the hotel. I said, Lord, could you make us seven? And the driver said, Michelle, oh, I forgot my daughter. And we ended up having seven in the car. There are six roses and one thorn. Wow, it's complete. But what is or what are two fishes and five loaves of bread? 
Among so many, you will ask that question. Elders, leaders of this church, we have a project. What is this much compared to big projects? We always measure the success based on what we can see. Our talents, our resources. But Jesus said, okay, give them to me. Give them to me. Oh. Andrew, I like him. When he went close to the child, he asked the child, young lad, are you willing to share your five loaves of bread and two fishes to Jesus? What was the child's answer? Mothers. Can you imagine, mothers, how the child responded? Why did the mother give that small lad five loaves of bread and two fishes? Mothers, you have the answer. The mother prepared a basket with that much of food because she knows the blessings of giving. She knows that if her lad will just be eating, other eyes will be looking at him hungry. And she cannot tolerate that. She wants to impress a very important lesson to her child. That's why she put more than what the child could finish. Take five loaves and two fishes. Because when somebody is hungry, don't hesitate to give it to them. Wow, generous mothers. And mothers, I challenge you to be faithful mothers because 80% of the intellect of the child comes from you. 80% of the personality of the child, the character of the child is influenced by the mother. And that's the reason why this boy, when he was asked, if he was willing to give that much, everything the child, I can imagine, would have said, Sir, tell Jesus to get the biggest, most of the loaf, just leave some for me. Get the bigger fish and give it to Jesus. Wow, how generous that child is. As a result, as a result, the two fishes, five loaves of bread on the hands of Jesus, thousands were blessed. Lessons on the fish, lessons on the bread. So little. Sometimes the talents we have stinks like a fish. The raw talents we, we have right now, we may think, ah, what God can do with this? It stinks. Others may look at it as nothing. It stinks like a fish. But when it is put on the hand of Jesus, little it may be, it's going to be broken and it multiplies. Some of us may be represented by the fish and the loaf when we put our lives in the hands of Jesus. It hurts sometimes to be broken. But we need to be broken, my dear friends, because we need to multiply. We need to be multiplied. It hurts sometimes, but that's God's way of feeding thousands. And the leftover, how many baskets full? Anybody? Twelve baskets full. Where they, get the, where they got the basket, I do not know. But did they throw away the, the leftovers? No. What did they do with this? When the leftovers were gathered, they gave each one that are living. Okay, have some, take it home. 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 They are already full. And they carried those small bits of food to their homes. And what did they tell to the people who received the, the food? They told and retold and retold the story, the miracles of the five loaves of bread. 
But if there's one that was so much blessed and so was amazed that afternoon, my dear friends, it was that young lad. It was that la young lad when he saw those two pieces multiplied, when Jesus started to distribute the food, he said, uh uh, two pieces only, five loaves of bread, but there is more coming out from the basket. When he brought that food home and showed it to help to his parents, mommy said, My boy, I gave the food to you so that you'll share it to others. But you brought some home. And the young lad would have said, Mommy, Jesus multiplied it. And many, 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 many were fed. I don't know if the boy could count up to 5,000 then. But he would have said, many, many, many were fed. These are just leftovers. But they taste as good. My friends, are you willing to put those five loaves of bread of yours and your two fishes? Are you willing to give your life so that God can use you, regardless of who you are right now? Are you willing to dedicate your children to be used by the Lord so that the work of the Lord will be finished? Thousands will be fed. I'd like to request Aryuna to come and sing a song to nail the message that the Lord has given us this morning. A little boy of 13 on his way to school had a crowd of people laughing and he went to take a look. Stories of one man spoke with such wisdom, even the kids could understand. Hours passed so quickly, the dead end in tonight. Everyone was hungry, there was no food inside. The boy looked in his lungs. Wasn't sure good it knew There were thousands to be fair But he saw the twinkling eyes of Jesus Diamond in his eyes And with the trust of a child He said, take my five loves and two do it as you will I surrender Take my fears, my inhibitions All my burdens, my ambitions You can use it all to feel Thing about that boy when I'm feeling small I'm worried that the work I do means nothing at all Every single tear I cry a diamond in his hands Every door that slams in my face I will offer up in
can use it all. Love is not too small. I trust in you. I trust in you. Take my five loves and two fishes. Do it this as you will. I surrender. Take my fears, my inhibitions, all my burdens, my ambition. You can use. Is it your wish, your inmost desire to give your life to Jesus so that he can multiply you?